So at this point, you should have a folder somewhere on your hard drive that has uh, these four spreadsheets in it. Okay, so you should have uh, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and then travel totals. And here's what we're, we're going to do. Let's let's imagine that uh, God bless you. Uh, you are uh, on a bigger company and you have operations in three different states, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. And there's a person that's in charge of updating the Colorado totals and a person that's charged of updating the Utah totals and the New Mexico totals. But you also want to look at those in maps. Okay, so we want to have these files separated so that Brandon's in charge of Colorado and Robbie's in charge of Utah and Dan's in charge of New Mexico. But I want to look at them at a higher level. I want to look at and bring them all together. Okay, so you're in charge of responsible for updating this spreadsheet, but we want to bring it all together. So I'm going to show you some tools, and this happens a lot. Like I can think about in the banking world, you might have multiple branches, you know, that maybe this person has a spreadsheet, this person has a spreadsheet, this person has a spreadsheet, and you bring it all up to the bank level at some point or outlets. Uh, so it's another way to do it. Now, when we referenced uh, when we referenced worksheets, what was kind of the indicator that said this is a worksheet reference? What was the indicator that we used that says, hey, this is sheet one, what was after sheet one? What was the indicator that said, hey, this is a sheet reference? It was an exclamation point, okay? That was the reference that was used. And if the sheet name had a space in it, what do we have to do? Use what? Quotation. Yeah, single quotes around it, right? That had a, a, had a space in it. Uh, now, when we're talking about a workbook reference, okay, when we're talking about a workbook reference, the indicator is going to be square brackets around it, okay? That's going to say, hey, this is a workbook reference. So we say this workbook with square brackets, this worksheet in this workbook, and then finally we get down to whatever cell reference we're talking about. So that makes sense? So here's the workbook, here's the worksheet in that workbook, and here's the cell reference. So. Uh, what I want you to do, and is, is it makes sense, it's kind of hard to type those things in and get everything exactly right because the syntax has to be exactly right. So what it makes sense to do when we do something like that is, is open up everything. So let's open up all four things. Let's open up Colorado. Maybe you already have them up, but I'm going to open them up all one at a time. New Mexico, uh, travel totals, and Utah. Okay. So I should have all four of those things open. Coffee's the perfect temperature right now. After class, it'd be a cold and disgusting. Before class, it's like boiling hot, right? But now I don't have time to enjoy it. Okay, so one of the first things you'll notice is when we have four worksheets up, Okay, when we have four worksheets up, you know, it's kind of difficult to navigate them all and to see what we have. Uh, so there is, under view, there's an option we can use uh, where we can say arrange all. Okay, this is going to arrange all of my open workbooks. Okay, so click arrange all, and there's different options. Arrange all tiled is as the name applies. It is a tiled format, so it'll take if you had four, if you had six, it would tile them along your open workspace, okay? If I go to arrange all, uh, the other option we could do is horizontal, and it kind of looks like this, okay? If we do arrange all uh, vertical, it's vertical arrangement. And if we do arrange all cascade, uh, it kind of looks like this where they're, you know, like cards on a, in a deck, if you will. Okay. Um, what I would like to do, a couple things the book doesn't show you, but I think are, is sometimes useful. Uh, let's go to Arrange All Tiled. Uh, and let's, at this point, oh, a couple things you can see. Which one is active right now? Which one is active in my, in my work space here? Yeah, Colorado is active because you can see the little spreadsheet here. Uh, if I want to activate travel totals, all I do is click on it. Uh, let's, let's close out two of these, okay? We'll have to open them back. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Range all, 
compiled. Let's see what I have open. Let's close out. Um, let's close out travel totals right now, and let's close out uh, Utah. And I want to do range all tiled. Arrange all. I'm sorry. Let's do um, let's do horizontal. Now, sometimes you want to compare two workbooks, okay, or two worksheets from different workbooks. Uh, one other thing we can do, which is kind of nice, is we can go click up here on View Side by Side. Okay, so it's kind of the same thing as the horizontal, uh, but you see automatically the synchronized uh, scrolling is clicked. So if we scroll down, I guess I don't have it on the right one. Uh, but if I, I, I go back up here, uh, let's see, quarter one is what I want on. Uh, but I want to see, like, okay, what the animal habitat is for both. Uh, I want to see what the global workforce. You know, now I have, I'm able to scroll through both at once. So I don't have to go up, scroll down, you know, then go down, uh, up there and scroll down. So that can be beneficial if you're comparing two workbooks and want to see the differences. There's other things we're going to do, like, uh, later, but 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 that's that can be a useful tool to navigate your workspace. Uh, what do we need open? We have New Mexico, Colorado. So let's go and open up our Utah again. So I'm going to go to File Recent, and I'm going to open up Utah again, and File Recent, and Travel Total. So uh, let's go arrange all tiled and. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, let's go range all tiled again. Okay. And I turned off side by side. Okay, so you should have up, it doesn't really matter where they're at. You can move them around, but it doesn't really snap them nicely. You guys know how you can snap windows. It doesn't snap nicely. Well, we have travel totals up here Colorado, Utah, New Mexico. So let's go into, let's go into, uh, uh, travel totals and let's go into the summary and what we want here is we want to we want um, and I don't have it for New Mexico but I'm just going to say I do I want to add up all the animal habitat tickets from Utah Colorado and New Mexico in New Mexico I don't have the summary so I'm just going to use quarter one so what I would do is I would put an equal, and I can't do a 3D formula, okay? What I'm going to have to do is, it, like a 3D sum formula, I'm going to have to say equal, and then I'm going to click over here to Utah, okay? And I click again on the summary tab, and I click in that exact cell, and you see it puts in that reference. It says, okay, equal Utah.xlsx. That is the file name, that is the workbook, right? It's in brackets, and then it says, hey, what worksheet do I want to use? Well, use the summary worksheet, and then finally, it says use cell B6. Now this is, we don't have to specify the file path. You guys know what the file path is? Like if I told you it was on the P drive, if I said go to P, business admin, Miko, all that stuff, that's the file path. If all the work, books are in the same folder, which you guys put them all in the same folder, right? It assumes you're talking about the same folder. You know what I'm saying? If this were on a, a, a network drive, inside that bracket, okay, I would have to put like C colon or P colon slash business admin slash Miko. And if I had a path in there, I'd have to use the single quotes. Does this make sense? Yes? No? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Utah Summary B6, and I'm going to hit the plus key. And let's say I'm going to go down here to Colorado. And in Colorado, I'm going to take, click again. I get Colorado Summary B6. I hit plus, and I don't have a summary from New Mexico. You might, because I, I don't think I saved 
where we were at. We, remember, we created that summary worksheet. So what I'm going to do is instead is I'm going to click down here to New Mexico, and I'm just going to use the quarter one information. And what do you notice differently about New Mexico? And I really didn't plan it this way, but what do you notice differently about the reference for New Mexico? What does it have that the others do not? It has that single quotation because it recognized that, hey, when I saved it, I don't know, for some reason I had a second, another copy open or something, it, it named it as NM-1. So it, it had a space in there. So you see it puts the single quotes around the work book and worksheet, okay, that's so it has spaces. So that's why it's, it's, it's preferable to link these with the point and click method, right? Because think about all the stuff you'd have to get perfectly right to make sure it finds each other, right? So it's preferable to open them up and then link to it that way. Now we have our formula. We're adding that plus that plus that plus that. If we hit enter now, okay, you'll see it has added those three values together. It's taken that 105 plus 27 plus 125 and return 257. Okay? So uh, I would like to do this same thing okay, for uh, the next couple. So I'm going to say F2. And what do you notice about, I want to copy and paste this, but what do you notice about the cell reference? What do you notice about the cell reference? <laughs> because when I'm linking another workbook, that's just the default. What about the cell reference? It, it is absolute, right? You guys see that? It has dollar sign B, dollar sign 6. Uh, so I don't want it to be absolute. So how do I change that? What am I going to have to do? I put it in F2, so I put it in edit mode. And now how am I going to change that? I'm going to use my F4 functions key so I can copy that down. Uh, so I'm going to take that B6 portion. I'm going to F4 it until it's relative. And I'm going to hit enter. Then change the data. But now uh, I'm going to be able to Oops. I'm going to be able to drag that, you know, copy it as long as all the formulas are correct. Okay, and it looks like I'm trusting it, but it looks like I have done that. So I have, in essence, I have taking the data from here, data from here, data from here, and aggregated it up to here, okay, up to the total. And, and remember, these are separate files. So we could link, you know, someone else is creating Colorado, and I'm just linking to it. Uh, a couple of terminology things that I want to give you. This is called, these are called the source files, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. And travel totals is called the destination. File. Obviously, it makes sense because the data is coming from the source files to the destination file. Yes, it makes sense. Okay. Now, a couple things. Uh, we have some issues here. We have what? We have built linkages between files now, and things can happen. Things can change. Okay, when we build linkages, if I renamed Utah to I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, something else. Utah, I spelled Utah wrong with an I or something like that. That link would be broken. Okay, you wouldn't find it. It would give me an error, okay, if I, if I renamed it. It would say it would go out and look for Utah and wouldn't be able to find it. Uh, so let us look at how we can manage those links. Let's go to uh, data. And under data, you see something that says edit links. <coughs> K 
<laughs> and it shows us the source that we're linking to from this workbook, this travel totals, is Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah. Um, does your status say unknown or okay? Hmm. Okay, just says source is open. Um, I'll tell you what, let's close this. And let's close out our, all of our source files, okay? So close out Utah. Let's close out New Mexico. And let's close out Colorado. And let's make our tr maximize our travel total. And let's edit our links now. You say okay, your value is not updated. Hmm. Uh, mine changed it. You see, this wasn't happening when I was doing it in my office, but uh, if you notice, it changed my path to be C, users, workstation, desktop, module 6. So that's the actual path of it. Uh, I don't know, I think it's still right. Uh, I'm going to do this. Let's, let's, ex out of, let's exit out of travel totals. Okay. And then save it. Make sure you save it first. And let's open up Utah. So all I should have open now is Utah. Now let's say I'm the Utah manager and I had a great sell of animal habitat adult tickets. And instead of being 5,105, let's say it's 5,000. Okay, I save this, and then I'm gonna X out of it, X out of it. Now when I open up travel totals, what it should say, and I hope it says it, um, automatic update, uh, enable content, Okay, it should automatically, my, yours might look a little different. Mine said enable content. Did yours have a little dialogue that asks you if you wanted to update the number? Yeah. Okay, that's how it should happen. I'm not sure why. What did yours say? Mine just popped up. Does it have 5,000 in it? Okay. Mine didn't save. Yours did not save? Mine didn't save either. Which didn't save? What? Travel totals. What do you mean it didn't save? When I saved it and then when I opened it, Yeah, and you guys didn't save it. Did everyone, anyone else have that? I have it here. Okay. Uh, it should have a little dialogue that pops up that says, hey, do you want to update these links, refresh these links? And you can say yes, no, or not. Now, uh, sometimes what happens is when we do this kind of thing, we're, we're gathering data from a different bunch of different files, we say, okay, we want to do it as one-time thing. It's not only going to be like a daily occurrence. And once I have those, that data gathered in one place, I want to quit managing that link because it's kind of a pain in the butt, right? It's kind of a pain in the butt to, to have that. So what we can do in a lot of ways, and a lot of times, and this is what we do do, if we go to edit links, we can go to break link, okay? And what break link does is it breaks the link from that file to this file, but when it does so, it converts the number, okay, it converts the number like 5,152, which there's a formula behind that, it makes it a value. So it just puts in 5,152. Instead of having that formula that goes out and looks, it <coughs> says, I'll just use the value that's here right now. So if I click OK, break links, I guess it is, you see the links are gone, and now all these values don't have the formula behind them. They have whatever was there at that time. Okay, so we've broken uh, that link. Now, if I want to open this stuff again, so I'm going to open up everything again. So I have travel totals. Let's go to recent. Let's open up Utah again. Let's open up. Um, let's open up New Mexico again. Let's open up. Colorado again. <clears throat> and 
and go to arrange all to see that we're up. Um, let's put in, <coughs> let's put in, I, I, you guys said yours didn't work, let's put in another link just, just so that we have a link. Um, let's go to travel totals again. I'm just going to link two things together. Uh, right now you see that travel totals is just 5,152. Let's say equal in there. Let's just put in another link and do it again. So I'm going to go to Utah. <coughs> Get in that B6 plus, and let's just link uh, it to Colorado. Let's just add Utah and Col Colorado just for the sake of seeing it done. Okay, now I'm only going to say, when I save, all I save is the one that's, and maybe that was the issue. All I save is the one that's current. I don't save all of them. I just save the one that's current. Um, let's go to about range all the icons. Now, one of the problematic things that you've seen when I do this is I'm working with four workbooks at once, which, you know, think about if I'm working for a business and maybe we have 10 states or 15 states or 20 states. Every morning, what would I have to do if I wanted to bring all those up and see what was in them? I'd have to open Pennsylvania, open New Jersey, open blah, blah, blah. Well, the other thing we can do, okay, is we can save, let's, we can save whatever our workspace looks like right now, we can save it. So if we go to home or file on view and go up here to save workspace, Let's save it uh, to my desktop, and I'm going to save it as, I don't know, um, Miko Home. And the file type you'll see is not down here. It's not XLS. I think it's XLSWX or something like that. I can't remember what the extension is. But anyways, we're saving it as a workspace. And then put that on your desktop and click Save. <coughs> and then close out totally out of Excel. So I have Excel shut down. So I come in in the morning, I want to bring up where I left off, I want to bring up all four of those states, or all 10 of those states, or all 50 of those states. I can go to Miko Home, double click on that, Okay, this is what the dialog I was hoping that you would see. This workbook contains links to other data sources. If you update the links, Excel will attempt to retrieve the latest data. That's what we want to do. If we don't update the links, Excel will use the previous information. We want to update it so that it'll, it'll feed back those links. So I'm going to click Update. Okay, and you'll see now that it brought it up to exactly where I left off. Okay, if I would have had uh, this window closed and maybe expanded this window, and I save, let's save this as a workspace, and I'm going to save it as Miko Home uh, 2. I'm going to save the changes I made, which was nothing. I X out of it again. I update, I open Miko Home 2. You see, it brings it to the same workspace I had and it, it, I just left off at. So it's a way of saving a lot of time if you have multiple things going on, multiple things you always want to open up, always things you want to check on every morning or check on every afternoon or whatever it might be, okay? Um, if we go to manage links again, so go under data, go under edit links, uh, we can change things here as well. Uh, I didn't go into this, I just went to bro break links. But 
I don't know why my it says unknown. I gotta look in that. My, mine said okay when I was doing it. You my, update values okay. Oh, okay. Let's try that. Update value. Oh, okay. Yep, you're right. Source is open. So it can't update when it's open. Um, but let's go to change source. Let's show you what that looks like. And here's where, like, if you rename a file, okay, you could change the source. So you could change that link to look for the new file name in here. Um, if we break a link, it will also give us the option to just copy it. Remember how we break the links in the, in the thing? We could say, just leave the values as is. So it is, you know, something that, that does, you know, when you have mobile connections, it does tie a lot more things together. Um, but, you know, it, it, can be, it can be very useful. If we look up at startup prompt, it tells you what the default is for when you open up connected uh, worksheets or workbooks. Uh, it should default to let users choose to display the alert or not. Uh, to don't display the alert, don't update automatic links, or don't display the alert and update links. This is for that startup prompt that we saw, like what should we do? Should I update all the, all the data or not update the data? So this is just a way of tying together workbooks, which, you know, as I said, in, in a lot of business situations, uh, you will get into something like this. Um, what questions might you have? I want to see if I missed anything from this, this part of the module. Source file we talked about, destination file we talked about, workspace I think you know what it is. So workspace uh, will keep like window sizes, it will open all the, all the workbooks you have up, zoom level, whatever zoom level you have set at, uh, any other settings, the tile configuration I think uh, we saw that, uh, you guys know what a destination file is, you know what breaking the link is. I think we covered everything in there. Okay. Um, if there's no questions, I'm going to pause here.